How do you get over a woman who you're hung up on but does not want to date you? Hi there, men's dating coach Harry Wilmington here, founder of introvertdatingsuccess.com, and today I'll be answering a question from a guy who wants to know what he can do to move on from a woman he has strong feelings for that isn't interested in going out with him. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon to be notified of new videos. Also, go to the website to watch my free video training, How to Get Attractive, Feminine, Emotionally Stable Women Dying to Respond to Your First Messages on Dating Apps without using sleazy pickup lines. And now, let's check out that clip. We're gonna answer a question from a guy that wants to know how he can stop himself from trying to be hung up on one particular person and how he can better motivate himself to go out there and see what else the dating world has to offer him. He says, what would you recommend to someone that is hung up on a girl that's not actively responding to hanging out or going out? And uh, I'm also pretty introverted without a real desire to go outside and look for other women. So I, I can relate to both of these things because these are things that back in the day I, I had issues with too. So we'll go with the first one first, which is what would you recommend to someone that is hung up on a girl that's not actively responding to hanging out or going out? And my answer is simple. Stop, stop reaching out to them. Well, thanks for tuning in. No, this is really, and I, it sounds simple. Like this really is the, the best answer I can give is if you are trying to go after somebody and they are not responding to that, to your, your ask outs, then you just stop. And the thing you don't want to do is get hung up on somebody and then you are constantly chasing after them. You're trying to call them all the time. You're trying to ask them out nonstop. You're trying to get them gifts and you're trying to write them poems and you're trying to do all this stuff to try to convince this person that you are worthy. What you're doing in that process is you are making that person be on a very, very high pedestal. And women already don't like when men put them on pedestals because it's in a way it's basically making it's making it basically they're getting the impression from you that you see them as perfect and i actually talk about this in my book no girls for you the ultimate guide to losing the girl of your dreams which you can get at the website as well but i talk about in one of the chapters about this idea of putting women on pedestals and to some extent society's partially to blame for this because through movies and music and other things all you ever hear are guys going on and on, clamoring for a girl. Oh, you're the best thing ever. Before I met you, my life was incomplete. I can't live a day or breathe. You know, all those old like Backstreet Boy songs where I can't breathe without you. I can't live without you. Please be by my side. Just have a conversation with me. And so, yeah, we make the idea in our head that, okay, women want this. Women want us to think extra high of them and want us to put ourselves beneath them and that's going to make them attracted to us and so when you do things like this when a girl is clearly either saying no to you or oftentimes in their very nice way they'll be saying no by saying things like oh i'm too busy i have a boyfriend oh i just don't have time in my schedule oh i'm going to be moving in a few weeks like they'll give these excuses because they don't want to outright say no to you and you're thinking as long as i don't hear that exact no then that must mean that i have a shot you don't and you're being very narrow sighted if you're just looking at this one specific woman thinking that she has to be your end all be all. We're in a planet where there's close to 7 billion people and I'd say about 60% of those are women. There are other women that are out there that will fit you and that will be able to uh, have better chemistry with you that will actually want to spend time with you and see you if you would just stop being so focused on this one and look past your blinders. And when you start to really like somebody, it can be very, very easy to put blinders on and act as if nobody else is there and that this must be the only person for you. And then more importantly, why would you wanna chase after somebody so hard that doesn't feel the same way for you? Like I would like to assume that if you're going after women, you wanna go after women that are also trying to go after you. That the, the, intens the intensity that you have for feelings for this person that you're going towards also has similar feelings of intention towards you. And this is a, a, a thing too that introverts do a lot, mostly because if you see a girl and you're getting to know her, that whole thing of having to get to know other people, it's, it's energy, it's exercise, it's a, it's a lot of time that you have to spend. So you might have gotten to know a girl and realize, oh, you know what, she fits my idea 
of somebody I'd like to be in a relationship with. So I don't want to spend my energy with these other people. I know where I want my energy to be spent is with her. But does she want her energy to be most of the time spent with you? If not, then you're fighting a losing cause. I think partially guys do this also because unfortunately, again, in movies and stuff, we see the guy that he's wants this girl and at the beginning of the movie, they're, they might be friends or she doesn't know him and like he's a pig or he's like whatever, they're not really getting along. And then during the course of the movie, he just keep asking her out over and over again. He keeps trying to do things over and over again to impress this lady. And then finally, you know, at the climax, oh, I suddenly realize I have a change of heart. Now I like you. And guys see this and think, that could be my real life. It's not going to be your real life. It, it's not. It's really just going to be a frustrating thing that you go through if you're fighting against reality. You, you, can, you can try to fight reality, but you can't fight the consequences of fighting reality. So the reality in this situation is you're going to continue to get ignored. You're going to be butt hurt, and you're going to feel some kind of way about it because this girl is never going to, to respond to your advances. Like... I know some of you guys out there are doing what's called the hope strategy, which is like, oh, I hope if I hope hard enough, this is going to happen. You are not the exception. Like there might be 1% shot that this could happen, but you have a better shot of looking at other women and finding a woman that actually likes you. Now to the second part of his question, he says he's an introvert without a real desire to go out and look for other women. And again, I get that because looking for people to try to even want to talk to, let alone get along with let alone have a relation, uh, uh, emotional connection with on a relationship level is all a lot of work. It just, it just is. And I know for introverts, especially that's energy and time that you could be spending at home, listening to podcasts like this or watching YouTube videos or doing your favorite hobby at home, whether it's playing video games or painting stuff. And it's like, you start to, as you, especially as you get older, you start to think, well, geez, every time I go out, I, I fail with women. But when I'm by myself, I can do all these things that I know I'm good at. So why would I want to go out there? And I think that's kind of a cop out. Like, I think a lot of guys just get into this thing where they just have some bad habits and they don't want to put in the work that it takes to be able to actually get better with women. So they'd rather just have the excuse that all women are crazy and I'm over here. Now me, when I was bad with women, I spent my alone time watching videos and reading books, but I was also studying up on how to do better communication. I was studying books on what women, how women think and how they operate and why they find certain things attractive and why the things I was doing wasn't attractive and just some of what their primal urges are and how to speak to those things and what kind of fun dates to take girls out on. And so I was doing my due diligence in my alone time by saying, you know what? I'm going to treat dating like a masterclass. I'm going to learn the ins and outs of what really works and what doesn't. I'm going to, the, the, the times that I actually get to meet up with women, I'm going to do some trial and error. I'm going to try some lines here. I'm I'm going to try some, some date suggestions here. I'm going to try some ways to ask him out this way. And over time, I was able to build. And it wasn't like an overnight thing. Like, if you're not going to be at this point where you go from, I'm just horrible with women to, hey, I'm so great. Like, you're going to have to start working at it. So, but if you start working at it now, then realistically, in we'll say six months to a year, you'll be farther along than you are now. And then in a year to two years from now, you'll be even better. So when I started getting better with women, like I'd say I started really studying this stuff in like 2003. And then by 2005, I lost my virginity. So it took a little bit of time, but it's, I got to that point where it's like, oh, I now actually know how to attract women, how to keep them around, how to, you know, it's like all that stuff. But if you just walk around day after day, like it's very easy in your day to day to say, I'm bad with women the next day, I'm bad with women the next day, I'm still bad with women and not do anything about it versus I'm bad with women, but I read an advice column today. I'm bad with women, but I heard a podcast today. Well, I'm bad with women, but I took this seminar. And then next thing you know, it's like the next week you're like, well, I'm bad with women, but I'm starting to feel comfortable being able to be good with them in this particular way. And I'm starting to feel better in this thing. And I'm able to actually like hold a conversation now. And I know some openers that won't like chase them off anymore. And it's just a, it's a build. Okay. So, and once you do all that, then you'll start to realize like, oh, now that you have a skill set that you have set in place for yourself to be able to attract women, now you're going to have motivation to go out there to test this stuff out. So, it's all a matter of motivating yourself to learn. And then from that learning, you'll be motivated to want to test out the things you learn, which will inadvertently have you going out to meet women. 
And you'll partially do that because you'll be thinking, I'm going to have more success now, and it's not going to be a wasted exercise versus you now being like, I have no skills and I suck, so I'm going to stay inside. You can do that, but you can't do that and then be like, but I, I, I want a girlfriend, but I'm just horrible, so I'm not going to do it, but I still want somebody. Like you can't live on these two, these two planes. So either you're going to keep complaining and just be a monk for life and not ever have any women or be like, if you want women and you like women and you desire truly being with them, figuring out what you need to do in order to make that happen. Okay. So you learn that causes motivation that causes you to go out there and inevitably that will lead to some of your dating success. Okay. So hopefully that helps this guy at least understand how that works. All right. All right. So before I go to the next section, I'm going to check out the chats here. Uh, somebody down here says, I wish I had skills. It, look, the the younger version of me, like 20, younger 20s, even the way all the way up to all the way up to like my 30s, like my my like what my late my late 20s. I just wasn't all that great. Like I really like I have the confidence now and I've, I've clearly had ex experience and I've you know done trial and error to where it's like I know emphatically that I know how to date. I know how to get women. I know how to keep women around. But when you're not in that space, back when I was like in my early 20s and I had no confidence and I had no girlfriend up to that point and no sexual experience, it's very easy to get into your head is to say like, because you, you'll start negatively putting yourself down. Oh, girls, I, don't, I can't get a girl because girls don't like me or I'm too big or I'm too skinny or I'm too tall or I'm too whatever. And then the next thing you know, you just, you just keep telling yourself that and then you trick yourself into not realizing that while you're negatively, negatively talking to yourself, there are women out there looking at you right now that you don't have the confidence to approach but would actively want to date you. And I got that told to me later in life by friends of mine who I went to college with that were like, oh yeah, back when you were in college, like these girls liked you. And I was like, how did I not, but I didn't have the confidence back then. And I didn't think girls would like me, so I wasn't looking for it, you know? Now that you've heard from me, I'd like to hear from you. What methods have you used to get over your one-itis crush? If you're watching on YouTube, leave your comments below or write me at harrywilmington at gmail.com. Are you ready to learn killer icebreakers that attract women on dating apps? Go to introvertdatingsuccess.com right now to watch my free video training, how to get attractive, feminine, emotionally stable women dying to respond to your first messages on dating apps without using sleazy pickup lines. This will give you key secrets to sparking attraction and conversations with women online the smart way. If you like this video, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe, and click the bell icon to be notified about future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.